Hello everyone. Today we'll be taking a look at some deadly historical feasts, from feisty feasts to bloody banquets. Shall we dive right in? For our first story, we're going to ancient China, where this guy Liu Bang was invited to a feast by this guy Xiang Yu. There was this whole war going on, but there's no way I'm delving into it. Xiang Yu had set up the whole feast as a trap for Liu Bang, who had only brought a hundred men. Thus began the feast at the Swan Goose Gate. Quick side note here, Chinese history is scattered with loads of events, with either quite cool or funny names. So here's a selection of my favourites. Anyway, what's the best method of assassination? How about a sword dance? I'm serious. Chiang Yu ordered one of his guys to start dancing with his sword and possibly, you know, stab Liu Bang. But every time the dancer got close, one of Liu's buddies started dancing as well and blocking each of the stabs with his own sword. And the whole time, Liu is kind of unaware that his own life is in mortal danger and is just like, eh, nice moves. Sometime later, one of Liu's friends, Huang Kui shows up literally dressed for battle with the sword and shield. He either impressed or scared Xiang so hard that he gave him his own wine, which he swigged. Fan then got given a large piece of meat and, like a boss, started eating off his shield, using his own sword to cut it up. He then just sat down and joined the rest of them. Sometime later, Luo used the old faithful trick and asked to be excused to go to the toilet, only to do a runner. When Shang sent someone to fetch Luo, he found him missing. Zhong. Yeah, at Fan's advice, Luo was running. He'd actually preferred to say goodbye to his rugby assassins, but what can you do? Wait a second, nobody's died yet. Uh, well, once Luo made it back to his camp, he executed the traitor who sent him to the trap, so... Are you happy now? <sighs> Sickos. Next, we're off to 18th century Sweden, or as I like to call it, Swolden. But this story takes place in the second half of the century, so... Our good king, Adolf Frederick, is tucking into dinner, but little does he know, danger lurks. See, he was a little on the porky side and liked to eat lots, apparently at this dinner having lobster, caviar, sauerkraut, kippers and champagne. But for our round boy, this wasn't enough, since he also needed pudding. He had his favourite dinner, Hedvag, which was basically just rolls with warm milk. Ah, I can feel the heart disease already. He actually liked it so much that he asked for seconds. And thirds. And fourths. Want any more, your majesty? <laughs> yes, sir. Eventually, his heart just went the fan! and gave up. However, this story is likely made up, so that one was kind of just a waste of your time. Time you cannot get back as your corporeal frame withers away and becomes nothing but dust. Our last story takes us to 7th century Korea, Ay. or Gregorio to be exact. So this governor, Yeon Gaesumon, catches wind that king... Yong Nu wants him dead because he's getting too powerful. All right, what's the play here? Yeah, he literally invited his would-be killers to dine with him in celebration of some rising governance he had. A hundred opposing politicians showed up expecting a lavish banquet, only to be butchered and taken in a ravished banquet. Does he know anything? So, what's for dinner? Hope it's pie. He proceeded to go to the palace and kill King Yong Nu. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. So, what's the lesson in all of this? How about don't trust people dancing at dinner parties? Wait, no, no, scratch that. Just don't eat any food at dinner parties. No, no, no. So how about just don't attend any dinner parties at all? Well then, 